Thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, it's my great pleasure to be here and an organizer for invitation. Uh, so first, I want to uh, start by defining what kind of group. Uh, so it's it, it looks like the arrangement company, but it's really about groups. So what kind of group I want to study? So uh, it's uh, uh, it's basically a fundamental uh, group of some manifold. Okay, so I need to define what's the manifold. So okay, so I I, I just take the complex space and. Uh, say a hyperplane is just a fine subspace of complex dimension one. So it's going to be, uh, and then you say a hyperplane arrangement is just a locally finite collection of hyperplanes in CN. Uh, locally finite means that if you take a neighborhood of some point, like finite neighborhood, then you only see it only intersect finite hyperplane. But in general, there could be infinite hyperplanes in this this collection. I just need locally finiteness. So now. Uh, the class of group I want to understand is the basically the fundamental group of the following manifold. I just take CN and I just remove all, all these hyperplanes. So notice that this indeed has no trivial fundamental group because this hyperplane have a uh, real co-dimension too. So if you just imagine a loop go around the hyperplane, that will give you some non-trivial element in the fundamental group. Uh, so so uh, so I should give you an example of why we should care about such kind of group. So, I mean, the simplest example I can imagine is let's just take in dimension two. So, we take a finite collection of hyperplanes. Uh, let's also make another simplifying assumption, say, all the hyperplane pass through origin. Okay. And then, and then now let's consider the unit sphere in C2, so which we think of as R4. Then each hyperplane. It's going to intersect the unit sphere in, in a circle. And then if I have a collection of hyperplane, then I will see a link in, 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 in S3. And then the fundamental group I want to understand. So, so, so this would be C2 remove of those hyperplanes. It's going to deformation retract to uh, S3, uh, remove all these circles. So, so, so this is really a link group. Okay, so this is like a no dimensional version of this kind of group. And then there's another example come from, okay, I should give you something high dimensional for fun. So, and then there's another sort of famous example is come from break arrangement. So it has something to do with the break group. So, so what I'm going to do is the following. So I'm going to take a collection of hyperplanes and then, then the fundamental group of the complement will give you the break group. So what we do is we start with the symmetry group of alignment. And then, so now it's going to act in on CM by just promoting the coordinate, okay? So, and then, so now I need to choose the kind of hyperplane. So I just choose the hyperplane to be fixed points of reflections in SN. So in SN, there are reflections by just promoting two coordinates. And then the fixed point set is just a GI to GJ. So that defines a hyperplane. So now I just take all this collection of hyperplane. That's my hyperplane arrangement. That's called Okay, I will also recall briefly was the break group. The element in the break group are this break diagram. So I have n points in top. So there's four points in top, four points in the bottom, and then I have uh, and destroy arcs between them. They're all high monotone. And the element in the break group are just isotopic class of this break diagram, fixing the end point. And the multiplication is just concatenation of this break diagrams. Okay, so that's the break group. Okay. So now, how is the break group related to uh, this hyperplane arrangement? Uh, okay, so, so now let's think about, I have this break diagram. I'm going to slide this break diagram. I see uh, one slide, I, I, I mean, I thought of R2, I see any points in R2. So now let's, let's imagine that you move the slice from top to bottom. Now we see a movement of these end points uh, starting from the given configuration and move back to the same configuration after a permutation, right? So that means basically, so here, this is just by the sentence. So each break is going to induce a loop in the configuration space of the end and order points in R2. Because I start with the same configuration and move around the same configuration after a permutation. Okay, so that's why it's an unordered. So let's, let's try to write down what is the configuration space of an unordered points. Okay, so first, let's write down the configuration space of an ordered points. It's just 
I fix n, so I have n points, and I, I want these points to be different, so I have to uh, remove this height. So this part CN remove all these type of points, the computation space of n older points. And then so now I have more, so there's a natural uh, action of the symmetry group. So I then I get the computation space of n older points, and then the break group. Because the break corresponding loops is not hard to keep the break is exactly the fun, fundamental group of this configuration uh, and other points. Okay. So this would be another example where this is like a classical object. So now I want to give you more examples of this. So I want to say this. Uh, the, uh, so so you start with some. For two and it can be generalized to we will be a symmetry group as kind of a reflection group. It's generated by this transpositions geometrically. We can think about uh, reflections, and so that's a procedure to we can take any reflection groups and I mean by reflection group and produce an analog based on that reflection group. Okay, so now I first need to define a reflection group. So. I take, so I take a final simplification graph such that each edge is labeled by some natural number uh, like this. So uh, from that, I can write down presentation. So uh, I guess one comes from the, to the vertices of graph. And then the, the relators are de, the, the determined by the graph. So first, I want to demand that each generator has uh, all, the, all, the, all the two that. Geometrically, we should think each generator is like a reflection. Okay. And then I had this interesting relation. So I said that if you if you see two vertices joined by S labeled by M, then I should put this relation we I with M equal to one. Okay, so this defines a group is called a cos group with presentation graph gamma because this graph tells you what is the presentation of the group. Uh, and sometimes people also call that a refraction group. So so also this relation we add vj to the m equals one has a geometric meaning. So it really tells you, okay, so we want to geometric what we think we i is a reflection, which is a reflection. Let's just pretend that we are in the Euclidean plane. Then this we add vj to the m just means that the hyperplane for vi and hyperplane of for vj uh, has angle like pi, sorry, I think it should be pi or m, right? And then the rotation would be we i times vj of rotation to pi or m. And then, so if you raise the power m, you get identity. Okay, so this is the meaning of this tells you what is the uh, angle between two refractive points. Okay, so now I also show some uh, some, some example of the group. So so a standard example is uh, I would take a sphere. Okay, I take a triangle. I take a geodesic triangle in a sphere such that angles of the three triangle are rational. Okay, right about a pi of n. And then I'm going to, I'm going to consider the, the group generated by a reflection on this side, reflection on that side, and a reflection on this side. I will reflect on the three sides of the sphere, the that, that, that group. That's going to be my example of the group. And in particular, it's going to be corresponding to the time of the sphere. And we can do this, of course, also in the equilibrium space. We can take a triangle and reflect along three sides, or in a hyperbolic space. That will give you a a uh, more beautiful picture. Okay, so this is the examples of uh, uh, groups. Okay, so now I want to also take another view of the group. Uh, uh, so, so now it's like every Cooksel group has an, somehow has a natural phase for linear representation. Uh, it acts on Rn. And then, so, so and this is going to give you a collection of refraction hyperplane. So this one trying to generalize uh, the picture that we had before that I have Sn acting on Rn and I have a collection of hyperplanes. So now here I'm trying to generalize for any coxal group is going to act on some Rn and I have a collection of hyperplane, uh, reflective hyperplanes. So the way it works, uh, okay, so, so, so the definition of this phase for linear presentation is a bit uh, technical, so I would like to skip that, but I just want to show you two pictures. So first, if I take an infinite dihedral group, then it's a finite dihedral group, is there how the representation works. So I just uh, uh, has two reflections, and then this will give you a phase for linear representation. So 
but uh, for some of the some of the new representation, uh, so for example, this finite dimension of the, the representation is also but for general books the uh, representation not so so the way for, for like like infinite dihedral, so it's going to still act on R2, and then this will be a fundamental plane, and then I have two reflections along these two lines, they're not orthogonal reflections. So the picture you get will be something like this. Okay, okay so this is roughly what happened in this presentation. And then for each of this presentation, uh, representation, so there is going to be an inherent open of for this cone. So, for example, first presentation, this cone is just a whole arc. Okay. And from the second, because the this cone is just a half a plane. Okay. So, and then uh, it's possible to have active property discontinuity continuously. Because you see, for the second presentation, we, we, we throw away our region where we see the active property. And then the rest. In the, uh, the action is going to be okay. so now this is what happened for general and then so now I have this Okay, so now, uh, so, so, so now, okay, so let's go back to think about what we did for SN. For SN is, okay, so I have a collection of hyperplanes, uh, reflection of hyperplanes inside some, uh, inside, in, in, inside, inside CN, right? So, so, so in, in, the, in the case of break group, I'm going to do things in a complex world. So here I'm just, everything is real. So what I'm going to do next is just complexify everything, okay? Then, so now, Maybe here's a, like an easier way to say complexification. So I'm just going to take K times K. That's like a complexification of this this point. And then remove uh, H lambda times H lambda. That's the complexification of the collection of hyperplanes inside this this point. And then, okay, so I have this hyperplane complement. And then, so, so notice that my Cox's group is going to be acting on this complement, right? Acting because the Cox's group is acting on the this point. The TISCOM is environment and an action of the Coxer group and is permute those hyperplanes. And then, so now, uh, so, so that's why the Coxer group also acting on the, uh, the, 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 the complexification. Okay, and then I have this manifold where the Coxer group acts actually properly. So that's important because we saw our those bad points. And then, so now uh, we take the quotient. So, so that will give you a manifold. This manifold will be analog. It's a, it's a general generalization of the manifold we've seen before. Uh, well, you have the uh, space of uh, configuration for an analog of points. Okay. And then we define that the fundamental group of the associated with the Coxal group. Okay, so now, uh, so this Arkin group seems the definition is sort of complicated, but it turns out the Arkin group has very nice representation. So basically, uh, if I take the Arkin group associated with the Coxal group, then the presentation is just the, it has the same set of generators. And the relators are all, all these kind of relators. So, so and still, the, you can see the presentation graph is the same. And then, uh, and then the relators is that one I wish and then I have the following relations of VI, VI is so the alternating world of start with VI of this M equal to the alternating world of VJ of this M. So this is the percentage of R. So in some sense, the presentation is similar, but some people still don't understand what the basic questions about R. For example, we don't know how to solve the work problem, don't know how to uh, uh, compute the both cohomology. We don't even know whether it's portion, uh, what, what it has portion or not. So basically, you can ask very basic questions, and uh, it's hard to answer. You're speaking, you're speaking about box step groups. You say you don't know to solve your problem. You oh, 
I, I mean, how people? Yeah, for course, we know. Yes. Okay. So, so the article we don't know how to solve the problem. And you don't know what is the problem in this book. Right. So it's contact to be totally free, but we we don't know uh, how to do that. Yeah. And then we also don't know how to compute the book homology. Uh, yeah, that's a bunch of open questions. And uh, yeah. Okay, so it's sort of surprising because the presentation of this group is very simple. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay, so so I want to give you a bit feeling about what, what are these relations. So if n equal to two, then all the relations that means two generally commutes. So in, in particular, this gives you another class of group you met already for minion or heard about this. The right angle arcing group are those arcing groups where all the ends are two. So right angle arcing only commutes. Commuting relation up here, and then when m equal to three, that's the uh, uh, the break relation. So 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 it corresponding to like uh, 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 if you look at this uh, break diagram, and then so I say this is one of your generators that I have sigma one, sigma two, sigma one is homotopy to sigma two, sigma one, sigma two. Okay, so this has a topological meaning, uh, but for higher break relations, I it's more mysterious. Okay. okay, so now I want to also work with this. Uh, so, so I want to just so for the list, I want to just focus on specific class of arcing groups. So I think unfortunately, even though the arcing group is defined for any focus group, people only understand uh, very, very specific class of arcing groups. So that's the, going to be the class of arcing group we talk about. Yes, yeah, so first there's a bright angle arcing group with all the labels are. Uh, I choose. So another class is what people call the spherical arcing group. That's the case where the associated quotient group is a reflection group acting isometrically on some sphere. So that's equivalent to the course group is fine. Okay, so for example, a red group would be a spherical arcing group because the corresponding quotient group is the symmetry group on a method. Okay. And then so so now we define spherical, then you can also define affine arcing group, it's just the course group affine, and then uh hyperbolic arcing group is the course group acting on the hyperbolic space, okay, so etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's going to be the terminology we're going to use. Uh, and then so another thing is there's another terminology associated to course of group and arcing group is called a thinking diagram. So, so the reason is that if you want to study this class like spherical affine or hyperbolic. Then what usually happens is that many element commutes. So then for that purpose, it's not so convenient to use the defining graph because you have lots of tools there. So now it's more convenient to use the so-called thinking diagram. So, so okay, so it's going to be a, another graph. It has the same vertex set as the presentation graph. And then we're going to say there's no edges if two vertices commute. Okay, so, so then we don't have so many edges in that graph because for this group, many of the elements is going to generally it's going to commute. And then we have x labeled by n equal to three. Uh, uh, if the, uh, if the, the two vertices satisfy a generalized break relation, it's we with a uh, of this n. And then if I have x labeled by infinity, if the two vertices start not have any relation. Okay. Okay, so this is the thinking diagram. And then, so now to, to uh, that's also a convention for the thinking diagram that the, if the edge level is three, then we just suppress it because, again, so in these cases, there is going to be a lot of edges unlabeled by three, so we don't want to write three all the time. So, okay. Okay, so now uh, I should say one, one of the major uh, conjecture for R group is the so called K1 conjecture. Basically, it predict that this space we just consider this manifold we consider. Is a hyper one space for arcing groups. Uh, so I think the the, the question comes from that. Uh, uh, so people want to compute the group homology of the arcing group. So if the conjecture is true, then uh, one can understand exactly what is the group homology okay? because this space people understand that. Okay? So okay. So now I should give you. So, so I want to say that this conjecture was only known for very few cases, but uh, I want to sort of go through them so to motivate what I want to do later. Okay, so now, now here, here I want to give you, this is more or less the, the, uh, 
uh, the cases where we know about Arhen group uh, and K1 conjecture, maybe with a bit more classes we're going to talk about later. Okay, so this these are the linking diagram of spherical and affine arting groups. So this these two columns are linking diagrams for spherical arting group, and this, these two columns are linking diagrams for affine arting group. So now here, for example, just to recall what is our notation. So here it means that it is generated by this node if you are generator. And if two nodes are not connected by edge, it means they commute. And if two, two nodes are connected by edge, but no label, that means they satisfy a great relation. And if two nodes are connected has a label, that means they satisfy a longer great relation. So that's the uh, that's the convention. Okay. So so now I think so first I think the first case people try to understand is the, the case for a spherical RT group, whether you know the I think it starts in the 1960s. People know that for type A, it's just a break group. This is just a break group. We know that it's a K Pi 1 space. And the argument was actually quite simple. It just says that because the complement can be real, uh, can be decomposed like an iterative fibration. Okay. And then so later, I think risk home uh, give a bit more cases. So in, in type, type B and D and the F4, so these are cases where uh, uh, the complement also had a fibration structure. Okay. And then I think at some point, the Briscoe was given a Burbaki seminar uh, about this problem and the was in order and then Briscoe conjectured that this conjecture should be true for all spherical arcing group and the didn't solve it. Uh, so he, he treat all the remaining spherical type uh, so that basically complete the conjecture for this uh, this two column that one. So it may maybe it may feel a bit bad because it, if you look at so so what did it did is for these five examples. But okay, I should clarify that it actually did did it still is more general, which which cover this particular five examples. Okay. So now the next next case to look at is affine ones, which is also quite classical. So it. So I think first people realize that the N2 and the CN2 that they can treat it. Uh, and then so it goes really slowly and after 20 years, uh, uh, the G2 that was treated. And then uh, and then what well, so the more recently uh, 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 so the BN2 that was treated, then there's still there, there's still a few more cases and some the DN2 that is left open. So then finally, like just two years ago, uh, the old order affine type of, for, for the KPI1 conjecture was understood. Uh, so, so I want to say that uh, it's not completely satisfactory because uh, this works, they, they, they rely very heavily on one of the previous works by McMahon and so on. And then, so somehow, so there were some uh, very heavy computations uh, with, uh, on these two, on these few cases where uh, it's like a computer assist computation. So, so, so for some people, uh, this is still sort of mysterious what's going on here. So, so now this is sort of uh, what we know about this sort of classical uh, type R group. And then you could ask, what about in general? So, are there are actually more general results about K1 conjecture for R group? Uh, okay, so there are actually some general results, even general principle. First general principle, so is that the the K one conjecture for all RT group just reduced to consider K one conjecture for RT group whose presentation graph. So, so notice that here I meant presentation graph, not the in that one. Okay, so we only need to consider presentation graph, which is a complete graph. So that means as long as you show K one conjecture for RT group's presentation graph in a complete graph, then you will know the K one conjecture for any uh, uh, any presentation graph. Okay, so, so 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 I think the reason is actually fairly simple. So there's a, a group theoretical reason. So basically, because every RT group can be obtained as I start with RT group with complete presentation graph, and I do iterated uh, a migration among sub RT group, which is defined by some subgraph. And then you can uh, so that means so so after doing like these amigrations, just break down to those RT group with final presentation graph. Okay, and the K1 connection for migration is relatively simple. Okay. And then so that's another reduction. 
So now, uh, so now we also only need to consider arcing group for thinking diagram is connected. So, so this is just because if the thinking diagram is not connected, I just have two components which commute with each other. So I just just pass to each direct, uh, direct comma. Okay. So that's why. So, so to to attack everyone that we need to only need to look at those ones. The presentation graph is complete. Okay. Okay. So now also there's another uh, general class of arcing group the Kata one conjectures. No, so this actually so sort of uh, motivate one of our results. So 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 it's known for all the two dimensional arcing group. So I should clarify what I mean by dimension. So that's a notion of dimension. So basically, uh, what you do is you just look at let's say S to generate set for the arcing group, and I just look at all the all the all, all, all the subset of the generating set such so as the arcing group defined only subset is spiral. And I just look at the maximum cardinality of all this spherical subset of the generating set. Okay, so this actually conjecture to be the cohomology dimension of the arcing group, but this is only not in the case of two dimensional arcing group. Okay, so, so in particular, if the arcing group is two dimension, then that means that the, 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 the kind of spherical arc, sub arcing group you can see is fairly limited. So let me go back to so, so these are the. the for the spherical ones. So, so somehow if the arcing group is two dimensional, that means a spherical sub arcing group can see is this kind of type item. Okay. okay, so this is some general result for arcing group, and that's that's more or less all we know. There's a few other other results. Okay, so so now I, I want to now now it's, I think it's time to say uh, what we proved now. So so okay, so so if you look at okay, so so basically what I want to do today is just to try to generalize uh, results about this like uh, uh, this class of diagram. So that's like a uh, several infinite class and the several uh, act, uh, exceptional cases. So the first thing you may notice that most of this diagram are tree, right? So so except for the a and two that diagram. So so actually in, in the proof it's sort of be important that it's actually a tree. So, so then one last question to ask is whether we know Kepler one conjecture for any uh, uh, any any arcing group for thinking diagrams are tree. So I okay. So 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 this turns out to be widely open. So somehow what happened is that the, so all this method they are quite sensitive to the shape of the tree and the labeling. For example, if I take the the BN type arcing group, if I just just change the last four to five or to six or higher, then we don't know how to treat that. Okay, so that's the kind of that's the kind of thing I, I, I want to do in the first first result. So okay, so I'm trying to uh, treat more general trees. So let's say I take a tree diagram. Suppose there exists a collection of edge. Let's say this is the open edge with label bigger than six. So now I'm going to cut among these edges. Uh, uh, such that as not as long as I can cut among these edges, uh, each component is spherical. Then the arcing group uh, would satisfy the Kepler one conjecture. So, so I want to say this tree actually is tree so the more general trees. So, for example, this would be a simple example. I have this edges labeled by six or higher. So I can cut among the edges labeled by six or, or seven or higher, such that the remaining pieces are all spherical diagram. Then that implies arcing group satisfy the Kepler one conjecture. So, so I guess the the, you, you could ask why why six. So I think that the rough reason is that the, if, uh, 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 okay. So so if, okay. So it's uh, the the rough reason is if you look at the diagrams, then the highest number you see uh, is five. So then so then if I put six, maybe it sort of uh, it creates some kind of clean separation. So yeah. that's where the six comes from. But the um, idea it actually not be such a condition. But that's the best thing I can do at right now. <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, so so this will be the first result for for some some tree diagrams, and then so the the next case is uh, uh, okay. So we have done spherical Euclidean type. What about hyperbolic type? Okay, so uh, okay, so not I said that nothing is known before for dimension bigger than three, but I just realized this morning that there are a few like six cases that's known. So 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 this sentence is actually not true. So there's something which is known 
a dimension big like three, but not too much. Okay, uh, I should clarify. So, so and then so now, so sort of motivated by trying to understand this hyperbolic type. So, so so I have the following theorem. So it looks a bit uh, okay. So so basically, I I look at those thinking diagrams which come contain a cycle. Okay, so now I take some thinking diagram. So now here the, they are not no longer trees. So I want the thinking diagram to have a induced cyclic subgraph, such that okay, so it's it's like a core of your thinking diagram, and then I, I demand that as long as you remove some vertex from the core, the remaining uh, the remaining uh, uh, is becomes spherical. Okay, so then as long as it is satisfied, then then the Kappa one conjecture is true. Okay, so this. This was motivated to treat some classes of uh, uh, hyperbolic type. So, so now it's, uh, it's the following class. So we say a hyperbolic type are being superficial if the fundamental domain of the associate hooks a group is a simplex. It could be a finite volume simplex, non compact. Okay. So now uh, uh, it could be also a compact simplex. So I should say that. Uh, 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 so you can also define the same notion for Euclidean type and the spherical type. So so uh, so they are all understood. Uh, but for for the simplicial hyperbolic type, I think this, this is sort of a sub summation for all the examples we know so far. So these three these three columns are examples which are known before. Okay. So 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 this was uh, two dimensional, and then this this like seven more extra. Uh, 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 example was uh, produced by Rustavi in one of her, her early works, and then I think this thing applies to sort of uh, some higher dimensional. Uh, so these are new results. So this the rest columns are new results follows from this theory. Okay, so you, you see they have cycles, and somehow I'm, I call this kind of anti-groove general A n type because they, they have something to do with the A n two type. You can be a uh, group. Okay. So now it may be a bit sad that we can only deal with finite many, uh, like maybe eighteen examples. So, so but I want to say that this theorem uh, uh, also applies to some more general classes. So maybe uh, I should uh, indicate some of these diagrams. So this these are also diagrams. Whenever you remove a vertex, there's a cycle. Whenever you you remove a vertex, it becomes spherical. So there's like a several infinite families. And there's also some exceptional cases. So, so these are also examples where whenever you remove a uh, vertex, it becomes a uh, spherical. So, so now I think one nice feature about this is that here you, you see a lot of exceptional type spherical RT groups sitting inside here. So that's uh, usually somehow uh, uh, sort of hard to handle from other methods. Okay. So, okay, so now, now I think I need to say a bit about how, how we prove this kind of statement. And also, I want to start with the general principle, which is also uh, how, how the previous result are proved. It's basically, uh, so all you need to want is you want the argument acting on some contactable complex. If you know that each cell stabilizer a small argument will satisfy Kevin conjecture, then the whole argument will satisfy Kevin conjecture. So in the end, so what you need to do is just to try to Find some nice cell compact where you, you, you have some way of proving compatibility and the cell stabilizers are simpler arching groups. Okay. So, uh, okay. So now I think I need to define something. So, exactly for that purpose, so I'm going to define this object. So, it's called arching complex. So, what we do is, okay, so I take, I, basically, I want to define a simplicial complex such that uh, uh, the arching group is going to act on the simplicial complex. But each vertex stabilizer uh, is a arching group with uh, which is simpler, uh, so so has exactly one generator mass. Okay, so now okay, so what we do is for each each generator. So so I think this arching group is generating set S. So for each generating, for, for each element in the generating set, I'm going to let let A S hat S hat means remove S. So to be the subgroup generated by the remaining generators. Okay, it's going to be a slightly simpler subgroup with one generator mass. Okay, so now the arching group, the arching complex, so it's going to be a simplicial complex. So the vertices are corresponding to that cosets of this 
this slightly simpler argument with one, one generating less. Okay. And then, and I also define high dimensional simplex. I do just define that a collection of vertex spanner simplex if the associated coset uh, have no empty common intersection in the group. Okay. So, uh, so this would be one complex. Uh, you see that uh, the arcing group is going to act on the arcing complex because uh, it's going to the left translation is going to commute all this all these concepts. And also, you see that what are the stabilizer of the vertices? The stabilizer of vertices is just stabilizer of some left concept and the left translation. So the stabilizer would be like uh, 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 exactly isomorphic to this A S. Okay. So the stabilizer are smaller arcing group. Okay. And then, so now, now the, I think now the following uh, uh, is not so surprising. Um, so uh, once you, you have this general principle, so then this theorem should be easy to process. So it says that uh, uh, if the arcing groups is not spherical, and then assume that all this smaller arcing group with one general mass satisfy the covariant conductor, and I also assume that this arcing complex contractible. Then I know the arcing group satisfy the covariant conjecture. Okay, so that is the that's the strategy we're going to use, okay. and that's also the strategy uh, some previous theorems used. Okay, so so now uh, there's one extra remark. So I want to say that these vertices of the arcing complex are types. So we say uh, vertex is type S hat if they correspond to a left coset of of this subgroup A S hat. Okay, so 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 that means the type of the vertex that tells you what is the stabilizer. Yeah. The stabilizer is just you you remove that S and then you have the remaining generators. The the sub is going to generate the stabilizer. Okay. okay so now I so so now not the, the problem is really we used to study the geometry of arcing complex. So now I want to draw you some picture of what does the arcing complex looks like. So it looks a little bit like uh, you can leave you if you. Is something you have thought about before. So, so now to, to simplify things, I want to start with a coaxial group. Okay, so for the coaxial group, we can define the exactly the same thing. So, okay, so I take a coaxial group with generator set X. And then, so now for each generator, I'm going to remove that generator and I consider slightly simpler subgroup generated by the remaining generators. Okay, so this has to remove S. Okay, so the coaxial complex, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. It's the simple complex. The work set corresponds to that process of this, this slightly simpler coaxial groups and the collection of vertices by the syntax if the associated coaxial has no empty common intersection. Uh, I should say that this coaxial, the coaxial complex is a very classical object. Okay. So, so now I think it's much easier to visualize coaxial complex. Then once we visualize coaxial complex, then we will have some idea of what is the arcing complex. Okay, so now maybe let's take a simple example. So now let's just take this coaxial group. So this, this coaxial group, uh, okay, so, so I want to say what's the coaxial The coaxial group is just I take an equilateral triangle in the Euclidean plane, and I'm, I'm going to just reflect among the three sides. Okay, so now, uh, uh, now that will give me this coaxial group and the corresponding arcing group is that. Okay. And then it turns out the coaxial complex uh, is exactly the timing uh, of by equilateral triangles when you reflect to the reflection. So, so we can even look at check that each vertex has the correct stabilizer because the stabilizer of this vertex is going to be the reflection generated by B and C, right? So this vertex of type A hat. And the, the stabilizer of this vertex is the reflection generated by C and B. So this, this vertex of type B hat. Right. So and then so then, then you have this timing of the plane. So that's exactly the coaxial complex. So now the arcing complex uh, is a bit more complicated. It still has this fundamental domain, but then uh, because the order of this edge stabilizer is infinite, so now you have infinite uh, sheets, and then here you only have two sheets because this is like order two uh, group. So and then this is sort of like a uh, like rough picture of the arcing complex. Okay. 
And then I should say this may maybe remind you of a building. So 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 in general, the arcing complex is not a building. So it looks a little bit like a building. Okay. Okay. So now, and then you could envision what 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 other uh, coxal complex. This would be coxal complex, another kind of coxal complex, and you, that the personal arcing complex would also has sort of bright. Branches, more branches, infinite branches on each side. Okay, so similarly for this hyperbolic picture. Okay, so now I want to uh, say sort of briefly how how I prove those theorems. Okay, so so now basically, so so our goal, the, the main, main main object is to try to prove that the arcing complex is contractible. Okay, so that I want to uh, just give you a very simple example to illustrate the strategy. Okay, so instead of going to to many massive details, so so now I, what I want to do is I'm, I'm okay. So now, now let's say I want to prove the Kepler one conjecture for number one. So this is actually something which is already known before, but now I want to recall how what, what, what how how it was proved. Okay, so so now so 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 the arcing complex is is the, is the exact picture I showed you before the fundamental domain is an equilateral triangle, and then I have all these branches. Okay. So now the idea is that uh, if we're able to motorize uh, the group, uh, arcing complex such that the such that this become a cat zero space, is some kind of non-person curvature space, then I can conclude that the arcing complex is contractible and I'm done with the well, proof of the K-1 conjecture. And then so there's a local to global theorem about cat zero uh, geometries. Basically, you need to show the whole whole complex simply connected, which is actually not too hard. And also, you need to show that it's locally cat zero. So that, that amount to check the link. So in this case, it amount to check the link of each vertex. The, that means that uh, the link is that I take a vertex and I take an optional ball around the vertex, and uh, that's that's basically a graph, right? And then that's what I mean. The link, basically, here I just need to check the link has cross bigger than six, and that's actually checking the link was the hard work for 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 this. Uh, uh, this example. So that was done by Tanya and Davis. Okay. So, so this is how example one was treated. So to, to show the arcing complex cat zero. So now I want to treat example two, which is actually uh, so it's, that's going to be something new. Okay. So example two. Okay. So I still could consider the arcing complex, but the problem is that first the arcing complex is high dimensional, and second, uh, so 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 example two is actually acting on some Hyperbolic space, the strength of simplicity is more complicated. I could still try to imp implement the same same strategy, uh, trying to prove the the space is at, at zero by checking some mean condition. Then, because the space is high dimensional, the mean condition would be more difficult. Okay, so now to get around this issue, so I'm going to do the following. So okay, so I, I take example two. So I'm going to take a vertex of type S1 hat. Okay. So, that, so, so, and it's not hard to show that the link of this vertex is a copy of arcing complex in example one. So that means I have a simplicial complex. I know the link is contractible. That means I can homotopy of the link and reduce to a uh, lower dimensional subcomplex. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I, I take the I take a subcomplex which is just standard vertices of have a hat, b hat, and c hat, but not s one hat. Because I know the link of each at one hat vertex is compatible. So I can just deformation retract. So the whole complex would deformation retract to this two dimensional complex. So, so this will make things much simpler because now I'm just in dimension two. And in dimension two, I'm going to more twice. So now I'm going to implement the same strategy. So I'm going to more twice. I'm going to more twice about in uh, any complex such each triangle is equilateral. And then so now I want to check the link. Of this work has curve to like six. So the same condition. Okay, again, the main work is here, but this link condition is easier compared to if you just don't do this information retract. So now we can see how this strategy could continue, at least for certain kind of cases. So for example, if if you want to do uh, uh, example three, okay. So now so, so now I'm going to take the work has of type S2 hat. I know the works of S2 hat is the art complex. Uh, for, for the group in, in, in example two, right? 
So, so then, uh, if, if I already know example two, if you have a contractible hard income tax, then I can just deformation retract those so that I get rid of all the I still have vertices. And then I can just, uh, so this is sort of the general strategy. So I can just keep doing the ref deformation retract unless I get to a core. And then I need to show the core is non positive curved. And that will give me the desired uh, compatibility. So this is sort of the one way idea. So now you see that the, the, the main thing to, to do is actually, uh, besides to arrange the deformation retract, is that I need to show this knee condition as satisfied. So sometimes the core could be high dimension. The, uh, so in this case, all the cores are two dimension. I can just keep doing the deformation retract. I get some two dimensional thing. But in general, uh, so I, I, I will encounter high dimensional core. So then I need to find some ways to check those knee conditions. So this is the last bit I want to talk about. So, okay, so maybe I just finish this very quickly so you can already run out of time. So, so basically, so, so if you I want to detect something's cat zero, then you need to check the links at cat one, right? And then, so there's, there's a way to categorize cat one space. That means it's locally a cat one space and average loop of length less than two pi can be homotopy to a trivial loop by a length decreasing homotopy. Okay, so there's a way to characterize cat one by just how you feel in the loop. And then, so now I think there are also other kind of uh, mean conditions. So, so, so I want to mention a work of Hytel because this actually inspired what we are doing. So, so like instead of what, what he says is in, instead of twice, it's, it's uh, simply shall come, uh, it's simply says by a degree method, you can multiply each syntax by some carefully chosen polyhedral norm. And this actually, uh, this actually gives you some simple link condition, which guarantee the complex is not exactly at zero, but it's sort of non positive curve in a weaker sense, which is enough to give contractibility. Okay, and then so now, so sort so of motivated that by, by work of Hytel and this Baldrige's material. So basically, so the link, in the end, the, the link condition we, we, we check, which actually works for a class of arcing, which is the following link condition. So. So we say that the simplicial graph satisfies the full wheel condition. It, it just means that for any, any four cycles, you know exactly how to feel the four cycle. For any four cycle, either you can feel the four cycle in this way, or you can feel the four cycle in that way. Okay, so this sort of motivated by the body condition. It's like a combinatorial formulation of body condition. It says that, you, uh, so it basically says that you know how to feel in certain kind of loops. Okay, and then so now, uh, and then uh, the actual condition we, we, we say, uh, we check is a bit more complicated. So we look at arting with the thinking different tree, and then, then all these things has labels. And then, so here I, I have this label for weird condition means that the label of S is in the convex hole of S1, S2, S3, and S4, because that we are in a tree. So, so this is the so label for weird condition. And then, so now maybe I should just stop very quickly. So, so basically what I check is that uh, this label for weird condition is actually uh, satisfied for many, uh, many arcing groups and then using that. So if you know some label for weird condition, you are able to check the link condition that will give rise to the contractibility of certain arcing complex. And that's sort of how the proof was finished. Okay, so now I, I think I should stop and sorry for running over a bit. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? So what are some of the main examples where it's still open then? Okay, Byron. Uh, I think some, uh, one example would be like the hyperbolic ones. So, yeah. so I think I, I only give a fraction of them. Yeah. So, so uh, like that, there's some even three dimensional hyperbolic ones were still open. So, so this was one of the main examples. And another main example come from the, the uh, right, also this thick uh, diagram of trees, I, I can only do like a fraction. Yeah. Okay. Other comments? Even maybe it's good to say, I see it said that you want to ask a question in chat, but maybe it's good to encourage uh, also unmute uh, the micro, right? Yeah, I, I don't know yeah. if you can't please it. 
any questions online maybe everybody can just unmute uh, the micro and ask the questions if there are some And for the motion free question, uh, mm -hmm. I, yes. uh, uh, is it known for the classes uh, uh, from this one, or are they like his choice, or is harder? Is it here? I see. So the token free would be a consequence of behavior lambda. Yes. Yeah, because it implies that there's this yes, yes. finite dimension. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So but, this Right, but uh, are there cases where you know the torsion but not the KP one? <laughs> 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 okay, so I think essentially all the cases where this torsion free is known more or less come from K1. Yeah, I'm not aware of that case where the yeah, right. It yeah, turns out that this <laughs> yeah, it turns out that this quite difficult to see yeah, this torsion free. <laughs> uh, so it's sort of surprising because the presentation is so similar yeah, yeah. somehow. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. So yeah, so I guess we don't even know if the K pi one is finite dimensional always. Yeah. No, because it, it would be ah, so, so, yeah. very uh, right? Yeah, so if it's finite dimensional, I mean you're saying it would be if it's finite dimensional, we know then it's the space is finite dimensional. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is exactly yeah. 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 So somehow so for example for the type, I think what they do is they first prove that the okay, so well, okay, so maybe I misremember. So, so, so to map the the sway, they prove that the, yeah. the, the group has some finite dimensional kpi, yeah, okay. but it's, they don't know whether that's that kpi is the uh, the, 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 the magnitude. Uh, and the, so uh, what, what they like... yeah what Polybia and somebody show is that the, the, the kpi one space they have is homotopy equivalent to that particular magnitude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, also just to answer your question, I think. For example, for great group, people probably know this portion for a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. So before people okay. even begin to care about yeah, the yeah, of the conference. Of course, yeah. So so I would say maybe for for the arting group of those arting groups, spherical type, maybe the people know about the portion three before yeah. you know the Kepa one conjecture. Yeah. And you mentioned this other question about plot problem. You said in general for Arctic strike, yeah. you said so long what happens with the dot problem is the strike. Yes, uh, but yeah, we don't know the solution to the work problem. And what is belief? Uh, uh, I think. I, I think the belief is that they all have correct thing function. Uh, and the, yeah, the also be, people believe that they have correct thing function. And the people believe they they are all non-positive curve in some sense. So so there was some conjecture even says that they are all pi zero proofs, mm -hmm. but then nobody knows how to prove that. It, even even in the case where the Kepa one conjecture is already understood, uh, uh, we still don't know. So 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 okay. So so for the spherical argument, you can argue that we already know. The we don't know. We will know the work on the sort of work, but we don't know correct function. Thank you. If there are other just take the speaker again. And you have a great uh, about six minutes. Uh,